Hi, this is Steve. I want to show you how to use Dynamics GP manufacturing with MRP in multi-level bills of materials. We're going to start with a sales order, we're going to go through the manufacturing process, and then we're going to ship that sales order. So let's take a look at it. This is my finished good bill of materials. And it has a couple sub-assemblies. You can see those here. It's also controlled by serial numbers. You can see that by this logo here, that means that the finished good item needs to have a serial number when it's manufactured. Also, this is a sub-assembly here. This is a regular sub-assembly, which means I have to manufacture it, put it into inventory. But this bill of material here, this is a phantom bill of material. Let's go to that. And this is not a regular one. It's a phantom bill of material, which means that when I make the sub-assembly that this is part of, these items are going to be automatically included in that. So I'm going to have a finished good bill of materials. One of those components is a subassembly, which I'm going to manufacture and put into inventory. That subassembly includes this phantom bill of material plus some other component items. So let's take a look at the process. So the first thing I want to do is go to the sales area page. I'm going to enter a sales order. Let's go to sales transaction entry here. Let's look up a customer. Let's choose this one here. Let's put this in a batch. And then add our finished good item. There it is there. Select that. And let's just create one of these. Let's sell one of these. And I don't have any in stock, so I've got to make them. So I'm going to put this item on back order. And then I'm going to save that. And when I tab off that, this screen comes up. This bill of material is set to create a manufacturing order in a manual basis. So it's doing that. It's giving me the option to create that MO if I want to. And I want to do that. So I'm going to generate the MO here. It's going to create an MO. This has warnings on it because this particular manufacturing, this particular bill of material has a long lead time. So it's indicating to me that I've already passed the start date for this. But that's OK. So I'm just going to click no on that. And now let's save this order. So I know I've got a shortage of these items. So the next thing I want to do is run MRP process on this. So let's go to manufacturing. Let's go to the MRP area and hit regeneration. And this is going to run that MRP process. It's going to look at all the demand for these products. It's going to look at the demand for the sub-assemblies as well. So we put in a sales order for one manufactured item. It's going to look for all the components to that manufactured item. It's going to find that it also needs sub-assemblies. It's going to create a, a requirement for the sub-assemblies and also the components of those sub of those sub-assemblies. So let's take a look at it. So a screen I like to use a lot is the quantities query under MRP here. And let's just refresh that. So this is going to show me all the requirements based on the manufacturer order that was placed for the finished goods. And you can see the finished good items here. It's already in the system as a manufacturing order, but the MRP process has suggested this order here. So let's take a look at that. This is a manufacturing order that's being suggested by the MRP process. I want to make that, so I'm going to transfer that to a manufacturing order. It brings us up here, and you can see the manufacturing order here. I'm going to schedule that. Again, I've got a lead time issue here, so I'm just going to go past that. It's going to build the pick list, and I'm done with that. So I've got my manufacturing orders that I need. I've got the manufacturing order that was manually created from the sales order, and then I firmed up the planned manufacturing order that was generated from the MRP process. So let's look at the purchasing side of this. Now, I know that I've got a number of components I need to buy. I need to buy components for the finished good item, uh, also the sub-assembly. So we'll go to purchasing, and we'll go to request resolution. It brings up a requirement for six items here. I'm going to select this button here. This is going to go out and find the standard vendors for these items in the location that I'm manufacturing. And you can see that it's picked up three vendors. We can click on that and we can see which items those each vendor is going to have. Um, I'm satisfied with the results. So I'm going to hit create and I'm going to hit OK. It's going to go through the process and it's going to create POs for me. So let's take a look at one of those POs. Look at the PO that was created here. Uh, this is for two items, and I'm just going to go through the receiving process so, to show you how that works. And so I'm just going to receive this, and I'm going to invoice it at the same time. And receive all those items, put in the vendor's invoice number, and post that. 
So that's going to relieve the PO. It's going to put those items in my component inventory. So I've got my manufacturing orders all set up. I've purchased all the items I need to make these. So let's go back and make that first sub-assembly. So I'm going to go to the manufacturing area page, go to manufacturing orders, and let's take a look at that order for the sub-assembly. You can see it here. And this is an open state. I'm going to release this. And this particular bill of material and the one for the finished good are not back flushed. So what that means is I'm going to use a working process for this. So I have to pull the component items out of the inventory and assign them to this manufacturing order. So let's do that. From the manufacturing order I can just go up here, go to the component transaction entry screen and I've got all the items on that bill of material from the pick list. I'm just going to mark them all. I'm going to add that to the pick document then go over to the pick document and assume that I've got everything from the component inventory that I need. So I'm going to mark those and then I'm going to post that. So now all those items are taken out of the component inventory and they're assigned to this manufacturing order. So let's go back to the manufacturing order here. Here it is. I've already done the material piece of it. Let's assume that the labor has been done and this thing is ready to take out of manufacturing. So I'm going to receive it out of manufacturing. So go up here and hit manufacturing order receipt entry. And if I wanted to, I could add some additional items here or quantities if additional items were used during the manufacturing process but I'm happy with the results so I'm going to just hit post and when I do that it's going to clear out work in process it's also going to create the finished good item or the sub-assembly in this case and put that into inventory so I'm done with that so let's take a look now at the uh, manufacturing for that finished good here it is here and I go through the same process I'm going to release that to the manufacturing floor and I'm going to have to take those components and the sub-assembly out of inventory and assign it to the manufacturing order. So let's do that one more time here. Here's the manufacturing component transaction entry screen. This is from my pick list. I'm going to mark all of these, move them over the pick document. Here's the pick document. Let's assume we got these items including the sub-assembly here and this one component item as well. So I'm going to mark those and then hit post. So we're going to take them again out of the component inventory, assign it to the manufacturing order, and we're done. So this is a report I like quite a bit. We'll go back to this manufacturing order. And if you go to this screen here, it's the uh, variance screen. And this shows me where I am on that manufacturing order. I've got the material here. I can drill back onto that. I've got labor. In this case, I'm just using standard labor from my router. I'm going to use that in my process. So um, this is a very handy report. You can look at this anytime through the manufacturing process. You get your exact numbers and what's going on from a material standpoint, labor standpoint, machine and overhead as well. So let's take a look at that. Let's go back to then the manufacturing order. Let's assume that the manufacturing process has been completed and we'll take the finished good item out of manufacturing. We'll do another receiving transaction and Remember, this finished good item is controlled by serial numbers, so I need to come up with a serial number for this item. I can go right here to this expansion arrow. This particular item, I've already set up a serial number mask, so I'm just going to auto-generate the next serial number. I only need one. I'm going to hit OK, and I can check my quantities here. If they're OK, then I can hit Post, and what's going to happen again, it's going to clear out this particular manufacturing order. It's going to clear out the whip for all labor and all materials. And it's going to create the finished good item. From a sales so order. let's do that. It's going to create this report here, which shows me that, indeed, this item was created from a sales order. And this is notif notification to me that this back order is ready to process. So let's go do that. So let's go back to the order. Here it is. Um, it, this is ready to ship. So I'm going to transfer this to an invoice. Let's take a look at that invoice. Here's the invoice. Let's just print that out. And this is using the word template, so we'll get to see what that looks like. Here it is here. Move it up a little bit. And let's go back to that invoice. And it's already to post, so I'm going to just post that. Take it out of the batch and post. And this was a short example of using Dynamics GP manufacturing with MRP and multi-level bombs. It's really quite easy to do. MRP takes a little time to set up, but once you set it up, it works very well.